Have you ever lost a trade? Well, chances are, unless you're gun goon, you probably have. So let's go over a few tips that may help you win more trades. And if you have any topics you want me to cover in the future, let me know in the comment section below. Now when it comes to trading, there are two types of abilities that you need to watch out for. The first type, we'll just call it type 1, is the ability that the enemy champion is leveling. Obviously, if they're leveling the ability, it'll do more damage and also have some other beneficial effect like more healing, more shielding, or a lower cooldown. So this type of ability is pretty obvious. But good examples of this type are Kassadin, when he levels his Q, the magic damage shield increases, and Vladimir, when he levels his Q, not only does the damage go up, but also the healing increases and the cooldown goes down. So the next type of abilities are abilities where if you don't play around them, 9 out of 10 times you will lose a trade. So good examples of these types of abilities are Jax's Counter-Strike, Fjord's Parry, Aatrox's Passive, and Elawi's E, abilities similar to that nature. And for this reason, we're going to call these abilities Type Goon, because if you don't respect them when you go in for a trade, you will lose that trade. Almost every champion and most abilities have some form of counterplay, except for Pantheon. Matter of fact, if you play Pantheon, you don't even need to watch my videos. Just keep clicking Q and there's nothing the enemy can do. But if you really want to elevate your trade into the next level, not only do you need to know how to counterplay the enemy's abilities, but you also need to know how the enemy can counter your abilities. And in this video, we'll be going over a little bit of that. We did mention Kassadin's Q earlier, so let's think of a way to counter his shield. Now as we know, or we may not know, his shield only blocks magic damage and it only lasts for 1.5 seconds, which means that auto attacks or physical damage abilities will still do full damage to Kassadin and bypass the shield. This is one of the reasons why Lucian is the hardest counter pick into Kassadin. So let's take a look at this Talia, KT is his son and see what he does to punish Kassadin. So you can see when Kassadin queues, Talia just auto attacks him freely because there's nothing Kassadin can do and his shield, like we mentioned earlier, does not block physical damage. So she's able to auto attack him three times and get the Thunder Lord's damage freely. Now if we skip ahead a little bit, you know, if we instant transmission to the next scene, <laughs> let's see what he does and how he abuses Kassadin again. So once again, you see when Kassadin uses his Q, Talia auto attacks, and once Kassadin's shield wears off, that's when Talia uses her E, getting the magic damage from not only her ability, but also from Thunderlords. Now that Talia has chipped Kassadin down after two good trades, and to be fair, Kassadin has healed up quite a bit with his potions, but because Talia was able to chip him down some, she's able to find the all in with Ignite, and if Kassadin had enough HP to survive that last auto attack, he may have been able to live with Flash, and this just shows how important each trade is and how each little trade, however small it may be, can snowball into something bigger. We also mentioned Vlad, right? Now the counterplay to Vlad is very simple. When his Q is coming off cooldown, the red bar under his health steadily grows, and when it reaches climax, you simply run away. Just pretend Vlad is something that you're scared of. For some people, that's a nice vile Arden Sensor Lulu altered 6 item Kogmar running straight at them. For me personally, it's dropping a piece of chicken on the ground. We all have our own fears. Now for the goon type abilities. Earlier, I said if you don't play around these abilities, 9 out of 10 times you will lose a trade. So let's take a look at two trades. One where the enemy doesn't play around Counter-Strike and one where he does. Now I don't know what exactly Netson was trying to do here. But if your strategy involves walking up to auto attack a Jax at level 1, you probably need to reevaluate that strategy. Jax lands his counter strike and an auto attack after it, doing about 40% of Renekton's health in that one trade. Now that's not too big of a deal because Renekton has built in sustain, but that's something for a future video. Now let's analyze this upcoming trade. Jax is constantly auto attacking the minions to keep his passive up, and once he kills the two melee minions, he engages with Lee Strike. Now the problem here is, because he engaged with his gap closer, he has no way to stick to Renekton once he dashes away. 
This lets Renekton kite dash his counter strike and once it ends, he dashes back in. The fight is still close because when it comes to straight auto attacks, there aren't many champions that can compete with Jax. But just imagine if he landed the counter strike, the fight wouldn't have even been close. It would have been like Yamcha vs Super Saiyan guy Goku and he could barely even be Cyberman. Now let's move on to the next example, Malphite. Now if you've ever played a melee auto attack based champion against Malphite, then you probably know the struggle of cancelling your auto attack about 50 times because of the attack speed slow. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna pull up the Wikipedia and we're gonna look at two important things. We're gonna look at the cooldown of his attack speed slow which is his E and we're also gonna look at the duration of the attack speed slow. Now we see that the cooldown is 7 seconds and the attack speed duration is only 3 seconds which means there's a 4 second window where he doesn't have access to his attack speed slow and you want to force trades during that window. Malphite ease me and I don't want to sit here and fight him with the attack speed debuff so I run up strategically retreat and once the attack speed debuff is almost timed out and you can see the timer right above your attack bar right above your abilities and once that timer starts to expire, that's when I want to re-engage. Because as we mentioned earlier, his E has a 7 second cooldown and it only lasts for 3 seconds. So in this 4 second window, this is when I want to force the trade. And because of the good trades I forced, I'm able to chase Malphite down and kill him. And I know this might look like a custom game, but this is actually a high elo Korean game. My screen just lagged a little bit. Now for the next trade. I'm just gonna play it while I talk about other things, but I want you to watch how one bad trade can have such a negative impact on the game. One bad trade can snowball into one bad fight, which can snowball into your team flaming you, which can snowball to a lost game, which can then snowball into a losing streak because of tilt. And when it comes to tilt, trust me, I have first hand experience as a tiltologist. So now I'm gonna start something new. And because it's my first time doing it, I'm going to explain it in detail, but only for this video. Basically, when I finish going over the video topic, I want to do a Q&A segment for the previous video to answer any questions people may have had about it. Ideally, right now, I'd be answering a few questions about the last video in detail, but unfortunately I literally could not find a single question about the video, which I guess is a good thing because it means I explained it well. But if you have any questions you want to ask me about this video, you can comment below or in my discord or if there's a reddit thread you can comment there and I'll reply back to you but I'll also pick the best questions and answer them in detail in the Q&A segment in the next video. There's also one more thing that I want to do in this segment. I'll be picking one to three video clips related to the video topic and showing them if people want extra practice and then I'll also be going over those clips in the next Q&A segment. So hopefully that made sense and if it didn't let me know in the comment section and I'll explain it there. But basically, I'll be answering your questions about this video in the next video. Now that we've got that out of the way, and I'm probably more relieved than you are, let's move on to the extra practice. I want you to look at this clip and tell me what these players do right and what they do wrong. In the first video, we talked about me and aggro, and in this video, we talked about playing around the enemy's abilities. Focus only on those two areas, and either in the comments or just mentally, Think about what they're doing wrong and how they could have traded better. Hopefully this helped some of you and if it did, share it with someone else who may also like it. If you enjoyed the video, like and subscribe for more. And if you ever want to talk to me directly, come to my discord. I'll put a link in the description. Thanks for watching. Professor Gungoon signing out. Peace.